Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on Strider. Strider is the noise made by air being forced through narrowed upper airways. The characteristic sound and associated features are seen when there is stenosis in the supraglottic, glottic, subglottic, or tracheal level. Importantly, Strider is a symptom, not a diagnosis, thus further investigation is warranted to identify the underlying cause. Any obstruction above those levels will cause a stertor sound, and obstruction at the level of the bronchi or below will cause a wheeze. The causes can be divided into acute or chronic. Acute strider is caused by foreign body inhalation, epiglottitis, croup, laryngitis, anaphylaxis, and neck space abscess. Whereas chronic strider is caused by laryngomalacia, subglottic stenosis, vocal cord paralysis, subglottic hemangioma, respiratory papillomatosis, macroglossia or micronathia, and malignancy. Let's take a look at the Bernoulli principle. The Bernoulli principle states that an increase in the velocity of any fluid as it passes through a tube, will cause a decrease in the linear pressure on the tube walls. In cases of strider, as the airway begins to narrow and the velocity of airflow at the narrowing subsequently increases, the linear pressure exerted will decrease and causes a collapse of the airway, resulting in the transmitted airway sounds. The timing of strider during inspiration-expiration can be used to identify the likely region of airway affected. Inspiratory strider suggests a laryngeal obstruction. Expiratory strider suggests tracheobronchial obstruction. Biphasic strider suggests a subglottic or glottic anomaly. The main differentials to consider in a case of strider are stertor, which is a low-pitched snoring sound, resulting from stenosis between the nasopharynx to supraglottic regions and wheeze, which is a polyphonic expiratory airway sound, caused by lower airway narrowing. Strider itself is a red flag sign, and investigation and management must be instigated urgently. Potentially more concerning is when the volume of the strider sound decreases, as that can mean the patient is becoming tired and less air is being shifted by the lungs. Important signs to assess for in all cases of strider include torticollis and trismus, inability to swallow and drooling, absence of a cough, cyanosis, evidence of systemic infection, or poor response to initial management. For investigations, in most emergency situations, the diagnosis is clinical, and initial management steps should be initiated before the results of the investigations are back. Definitive management steps will then vary between the underlying causes. For non-emergency or chronic cases, visualization of the upper airway will normally be done via fiber-optic nasal endoscopy, as a quick and minimally invasive means to differentiate where the pathology lies. Further imaging studies, such as CT scanning, can be used in the case of abscess or malignancy, whilst bronchoscopy can be used if visualization below the vocal cords is warranted, such as suspected subglottic stenosis. Any form of airway examination should be avoided in cases of suspected epiglottitis or croup, as can predispose to sudden airway closure. This is a nasal endoscope, used to assess many cases of strider. For acute causes that require urgent management, initial steps should involve First, stabilize the patient, start high-flow oxygen, and alert suitable senior specialists, such as ENT or NAs. Second, try to suction secretions or clear any foreign body from airway if obvious or visible. Give adrenaline or steroids as necessary. Take bloods, including an ABG or cultures if indicated. In emergency situations, be prepared to perform or assist with an emergency crocothyroidotomy or intubation. That's all for this video. Thank you.